Behind me, these folks right here, I'm about to get caught in the net, are using what's called the seine net to basically try and catch some of the fish that live here in the shallow tidewater Hudson. As you may have heard in the introduction, because this is a tidal estuary, the tides rise and fall. We're basically at low tide right about now, but if you look up on the beach, we've marked the high tide line with some orange flags. So you really get the feeling of what kind of variation we have of tides here. Now, fish and other animals love estuaries because they are incredibly rich with habitats, with nutrients, with food. In fact, if you look down here at the bottom of the river, you might notice there is some fantastic, fantastic mud. And all this mud is full of detritus and organic matter that serves as a wonderful, wonderful base of the food web. Oh my gosh, check it out. The seine net's up. The seine net's up. And ladies and gentlemen, we have got some fish. Check it out. Oh, my God. oh, oh. fantastic. Uh, Joanna, what uh, what do we got there? I think we have a little catfish. I believe so we do. So it's handsome little whiskers. Excellent. So now this technology here, seining, we use this all the time to collect fish from the Hudson River. This would be considered a relatively small seine. Some of our scientists use seine nets that are 300 feet long and actually have to be uh, brought to shore using a motorboat. Seining is, is a way of catching fish that has been around for thousands and thousands of years. And it's really great to remember that people, for as long as there's been people, there have been people who have depended on fish, people who have depended on rivers and estuaries and ocean habitats. And every time we go seining like this in the Hudson River, it's a reminder how we're all connected together. Now the fish that we catch here today are for educational purposes. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna count up the different fish that we've caught today. And a little bit later on in the program, we'll display what we've caught and we'll talk about what that means. All the fish that we catch here today, we will let go. So don't worry, all the fish that here that will be treated respectfully and put back into the Hudson River so that they can carry on with their life cycles. It's very, very important to us. Oh, oh. Awesome. <laughs> another one. Joanna, beautiful catch. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Chris. We're gonna go check in now with, uh, with Joanna, who was one of our seining crew. She's gonna fill us in a little bit on what we've caught today. Earlier in the program, we saw a couple people pulling up a seine net. Well, now it's time to see exactly what we caught. Joanna. Hello, high Chris. High five. Right on. So, what have we got today? We got a lot of stuff. As you can see here, here's our chart. We got six banded killie. Here's okay. one of them. You can see oh, here this little sure, cutie. Sure, sure. Um, seven brown bullheads. Beautiful. Um, that was that catfish you were yep. talking about? And four spot tail shiners mm -hmm. and one sunfish and four white perch for a oh, grand total okay. of 22 fish. Okay, not bad for a quick little five minute no, saying that we did, no, right? Not bad. If right, you'd cool. like to oh, see and here, which, which one is this right this here? This is actually a banded killifish. Okay. Um, here's that spot tail shiner. Oh, that we caught. beautiful. Very, and very pretty. And just that brown bullhead again. Uh, yeah. Look how look handsome. At, look at those beautiful, uh, the, those, those, those feelers are called barbels. And that's what the catfish uses to basically sense out its prey. It has chemical sensors on those whiskers, those barbels, that are basically like our taste buds. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that allows it to feed pretty well in, in murky waters. Um, now, Joanna, I, uh, th this, is, this is what we caught today in, in, in the springtime. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that back in October, we had a different group of students here that were doing a saying that uh, as part of something called a day in the life of the Hudson River. This is an annual event that involves 3,000 students up and down the Hudson River estuary. Here's what they found in October. In October, we actually see a, a, a repeat of some of the species we found. In, you had six banded killifish. In October, we had 78. We had 55 sunfish, 16 tessellated darters, which was something we saw earlier, one largemouth bass, and one of these spot tail shiners for a grand total of 151 fish. So it's amazing to see the difference between October and May. At the end of the fall, we've had, we've had you know, several, uh, 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 several months for, for young fish to be born and develop, and we see far more numbers of fish in the fall than we sometimes do in the spring. But it's important to remember that the Hudson River is always full of life and there's always something going on in the river. 